Hello, Praise Chapel Garden Grove. Welcome to our online community. We are so glad that you chose to tune in with us today during these times. In such times, it's important for us to be connected, to be united with each other, and to be in communication throughout the week. And so what I wanna kinda do is give you a blueprint with what Praise Chapel Garden Grove is providing during these times. So every Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m., we are meeting virtually together online. This is a time for us to worship God together in one spirit and united together. And in that, our pastor, Pastor Albert Garcia, will continue to move us through these times with the Word of God planted in his heart and given to us. It doesn't end there, though. Every Wednesday, 7 p.m., we are also continuing with our services. Again, worship and the Word of God to get us through the rest of this week and to keep us spiritually fed and nourished. Fridays, a little different. We have our connect group leaders and our connect group leaders are doing something a little bit different. We're doing sometimes it's question and answer. Sometimes it's simply a word that we get to communicate and let our hair down a little bit and just have a good time. And so that's every Friday at 730. We're having our connect group online gatherings. And lastly, something new that we've just added to our agenda. 1030 Saturday mornings, Pastor Manuel Tafoya will be running our online prayer group. So if you have a prayer need or if you have have a family member who's been telling you to pray for them, log on with us in the morning and just seek God with our pastor and let's just go after it together during these times. During these times, we need each other. We need to be arm locked together and ready to fight these battles with prayer and with unity with one another. And lastly, you may be watching me right now through three different devices. It could be Facebook, it may be YouTube, or it may have been through our, our website. But whatever it is, we just want you to know how you can find us. And that is through our YouTube channel, that is through Facebook, or that is from our website. You can access either of those pages. So again, we don't want any of you to fall behind or be left. We are here to be together so that when this is all over, we will be together and we would not have missed a step during this time. Thank you so much for choosing to join us during this time. And now enjoy the service. God bless you.
for tuning in with us and worshiping with us. Uh, now let's just get ready as we prepare for our offering. How you doing everyone? Pastor Manuel here, gonna pick up our offering for today and uh, looks like we'll be seeing each other here pretty soon, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, um, Pastor Albert uh, had me uh, get ready to pick up the uh, offering for today and you know, and as I began to meditate on the word, the Holy Spirit began to put faithfulness, faithfulness, you know, not easy to be faithful. There's people that have been faithful for, you know, a good long time. And, uh, you know, God really honors that. And, you know, if you read the Bible, in fact, even in Psalms 18, 25, he says that he shows himself faithful to the faithful. In fact, I even remember when Pastor Albert had mentioned to his pastor, you know, that one time he came up and asked him, what can I do? What do you want me to do here? What is it that you, you know, what, what's my calling? And he turned around and told him, he goes, Albert, just be faithful. Just be faithful. So faithfulness, you know, will carry you a long way. You know, because the Bible is very, very adamant about us being faithful. You know, yeah, we can be faithful a week, two weeks, a month. But how about in the longevity of time? Year after year after year. And then how about when things don't look so good? Can we continue and remain faithful? You know, but there's good, there's promises for those that remain faithful. In fact, God is so good anyways, you know, regardless if we're not as faithful as we ought to be, he's still faithful. But he's very, very, you know, he, he, he actually blesses those that have been very faithful, okay? But I want to read, found here, you know, in, in Philippians. We've read it a ton of times. I love this because it's, it's, it's a promise for those that have been faithful. And, you know, Paul, writing the letter to the Philippians, he says, starting right here in Philippians, I believe it's um, 10, 10, okay, Philippians 4.10. I wanna read it real quickly, and then I just wanna just touch on a couple, couple of points that the Holy Spirit put in my heart. And again, he's speaking to the Philippian church, and he's telling them about how God will supply their needs because of their faithfulness. Found here in verse 10 says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your, your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. In fact, you know, they wanted to bless them many, many times and bring offerings and bring, you know, uh, I don't know what else they wanted to bring. But, you know, he always, uh, uh, they always wanted because they cared for Paul. They always wanted to bring something for Paul. But they never had that opportunity, you know, yeah. so... Right here in the Bible, it says, you know, some interesting things that, that are really, really important for us to, to understand that God is faithful to those that are faithful. And it says again right here in verse 12 says, I know, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. In other words, he's had little and he's had much. And then verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. He learned to trust in the Lord in every situation. I know that these times that have been uncertain for some of us, some of us haven't had the work or maybe the raises that we've needed, and it's been difficult, difficult, not easy to be faithful. That God, he's watching it, and he proves himself faithful to the faithful. Okay, let me go on. And then he, I'm going to jump over to verse 17 because it says like this. It says, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. In other words, you know what? He wasn't asking for an offering. He wasn't asking for the Philippians, you know, to, to, to keep giving because he learned how to have little and how to have much. But he didn't want to rip them off. We can rip people off, you know, when they want to give, even if it's just a buck, you know, you know, no, 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 bro, don't, don't, don't give that dollar. Now, wait a second. You're ripping them off when you stop that because it may not be a lot to you, but it's a lot to them. But really, the Bible says, given it shall be given unto you. So you're really ripping them off when you stop him from giving. And let me go on, let me go on what it says right here. It says, indeed I have all abound, Paul speaking again. I am full, having received from Ephroditus the things set from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. And then here's the big one, man. Here's the one that is misquoted from everyone. Everyone misquoted. In fact, I misquoted this for years, thinking, man, you know what? Praise God, whether I give or don't give, you know, God's gonna supply my needs. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. This is uh, shows me a lot different after the years of studying. It says, verse 19, the most famous out of the Philippian uh, uh, letter. 
it says, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you circle that word or take away that word and, it would be just name it, claim it, name it. Yeah, it would be the way I used to believe. But because that and is there, it says that because you have been faithful, because you have been giving, because no matter what happened, you always gave us the gift. You always supplied. You always reached out. Even though you didn't have much, you gave it. That promise is for you. And I know they're friends. There's a lot of people out there that nobody knows, but you've been faithful. You've been giving. You've been stretching yourself in these times. Maybe you didn't get that raise. Maybe you don't even have the job. But you still had a saving said no way man i'm going to keep giving to my church i'm going to keep giving and giving and giving no matter what no matter what i'm going to keep giving that promises for you and now you can say and my god will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through christ jesus because of your faithfulness that's a promise to every believer amen and you know with saying that you know uh, uh i wanted to encourage you to continue to give folks continue to give because god is faithful even when we're not faithful he remains faithful and there's a special blessing for those that continue to give uh i want to uh, encourage you you know to continue to give and there's a, a you know multiple ways of giving in our church one way the way that i love to give is to, the text to give and that's uh, the phone number i'll repeat it a couple of times it's 714-933-9090 714-933-9090 or you can give online you can just go to www.praisechapelgg.com and follow the prompts and you can give that way it's www.praisechapelgg.com or you can do it the very old-fashioned way i've learned to give text to give i'm still old-fashioned but i <laughs> i do it the, the a, a little bit more modern way and that's text to give and if you do decide to give cash or, or however you want to give you know maybe check send it out to this p.o box it's p.o box 182 la mirada california 90637 i'll say it again p.o box 182 la mirada california 90637 okay so continue to give continue to be faithful and i promise you we will see you soon Let's prepare our hearts as we get ready for the message. Hello, friends and family, Praise Chapel Garden Grove. Thank you for joining us this evening on this Wednesday night midweek service. We are extremely grateful for you and thankful to God for your salvation and your continual support and your faithfulness to God and to the kingdom of God. Today, I want you to open your Bibles, please, to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I almost said 13, but it's actually chapter 3. And when you find that chapter, I'm going to ask you that you would stand with you and your family, that you would treat your house as the house of God, because that's really what it is. Our homes have become the Lord's house. And I would ask you to treat it with utmost respect in this time together, that you would not use this time together as a form of entertainment, but this will be the time that you would shut everything off, your stove, 
your radio, everything. This is now the house of God. And I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. This is the words of Paul uh, to the church at Corinth. And he says this, If anyone builds on this foundation, meaning the foundation of Christ, using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of every person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as escaping through the flames. And today I want to minister and close out the series that we began almost a month ago entitled In Transit, Navigating Through the Different Seasons of Life. Would you help me pray, please? Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this time together. You said where there is two or three gathered in your name, there you are in their midst. And today we trust and put our faith and hope knowing, Lord, that you are here with us even now. I ask you that you would anoint and enable my lips to speak only that which you have preordained before this hour. I also ask you that you would anoint the ears and enable the ears, the listening spirits of your people, that they would receive the word that I'm about to deliver. I ask you, Father, all of this with the help of the Holy Spirit and the intervention of the Holy Spirit. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please, would you do me a favor and give God the biggest shout of praise that you can. And go ahead and take a seat now. God bless you. Last Wednesday, I had a vision. I, hadn't, I had not had a vision uh, for quite a long time. And last Wednesday, about 12.45 in the morning, I had already been asleep. And the Lord awakened me with a vision. Let me tell you what the vision was. I saw a large spider that was falling from a ceiling, from a roof, rather, outdoors. And the spider was sliding downward on that roof. And eventually it lost its grip and fell into the ground into a puddle of water. As the spider landed on the puddle of water, it was upside down. And I could see its legs just scrambling to survive. It was trying to survive, but it was rapidly drowning in water. And then, all of a sudden, the vision changed. And I saw a small spider also falling from the rooftop. It lost its grip also, and it landed not on a puddle of water, but it landed on, on the ground, on the gravel. And I could see that the young, smaller spider was also struggling for life, trying to survive. And then it died. And then I pondered, I said, Lord, what does this mean? I knew that the vision was from God, and I began to ask God what it meant. And historically, in my personal life, in my personal relationship with God, it seems like God never gives me the interpretation, only when He finds fit to do so. And so I went on in my merry day, and throughout the day I remembered about the vision, and I decided to look up what the spider meant what the symbolism of a spider is. And to my amazement, as I began to research, I found out that a spider symbolizes fate and destiny. That a spider would symbolize fate and destiny. I took that, I pondered it, put it in my heart, and continued with my daily business throughout the day. It wasn't until later at night, it must have been about 7, 8 p.m., that I went up to the restroom, I was going to take a bath, and I began to turn the bathtub on. And the minute I turned the bathtub, the Lord said to me that the, the, the vision that I had seen, He said to me, these are the words, that there are some who will lose their fate and their destiny in this season. He said there are some who have fallen or will fall, and they will be struggling for dear life, and they will be struggling just to stay in their destinies and in their fate. And he, I believe that the Lord's told me to pray for these folks, to seek Him on behalf of these individuals, to intercede for them. And friends, I share that with you because of this. This is a very particular season that we are in. 
This is the season according to our text, verse 13, if you look at it, that our work will be shown for what it really is, is what verse 13 tells us. In verse 13, it also tells us this, that, what our, that our work will be revealed by fire. That the things that we have done throughout the years, whether it had been with the wrong heart or the wrong motives, whatever it is, whatever the case may be, that this work that you and I have been involved with, the kingdom of God will be tried and tested in this season. This is what the Lord was showing me. In verse 13, it also says that the fire will test the quality of each person's work. You see, friends, we've been doing the work of God. We've been doing the kingdom of God. But the word of the Lord told me this, that God was about to test, that not necessarily he himself, but the circumstances would test the work of every man. Friend, I don't know where you are today, but I want you to know something, that you must heed to the words that I am speaking to you. I really believe that this is the season where many are going to fall, many are going to struggle for dear destiny, and will lose their fate and destiny because they did not do the right thing in this season. In verse 14, it tells us, Something that I consider to be good news. It says, but if what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. What God is saying is this, if what you have been building all these years, if what you have been claiming that you are doing for God all, this, all these years, if it survives, if you can survive this season, he says, God will reward you. And then he closes this text in verse 15 by saying something of great concern. In verse 15 he says, But if it's burned up, if the works, the labor, the motives, the things we build on, if it's, if it's burnt up, he said, he says the builder will suffer loss. And I believe, friends, that for the last two months, this is exactly what's been happening throughout the church of Jesus Christ. I believe that hearts are being tested. I believe that motives are being tested. I believe that the loyalties, the commitments, the relationship with God are being tested. And I believe that the fire, the circumstances, the, this pandemic is testing and trying the hearts of every man who claims to love and know God, friend. And I believe that God is going to reward some of you at the end of this season but sadly, I fear that some may not make it through this season. And I ask you to pray for them, to pray for your brothers and pray for your sisters in this difficult season of life. And so today I want to try to, try to bring some direction on how to successfully navigate, how to transit through this, this pandemic era that we're in, this pandemic time that we're in, how to transition, how to transit through this whole season and come out the other side successfully. I believe, friends, that that is possible. I don't believe that, that our fate has to be uh, put on the line. I don't believe that our destinies uh, have to be forfeited. I believe that if you and I take the right stand and you and I take the right, the right posture before God, I believe that God will see us through it uh, and we will come out the other side stronger than we've ever been. I truly believe that. But I believe also that you and I bear a responsibility in that process. And so today I want, to, I want to speak to you about three principles that I believe the Lord laid in my heart very clearly concerning successfully navigating through the seasons of life. And the first principle I have is this. If we are going to successfully navigate through this transitional period of time in our lives, the first thing we have to do is this, is trust God. Trust God. Friends, uh, trust is, is something that most people may not really clearly understand. Trusting God is, is, is not trusting in our intellect. It's not trusting in our wisdom. But trusting God goes far beyond that. And friends, in fact, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, the, pro the prophet says something I think that is very key. You know the scripture. But I believe this scripture is timely for a time like this. He says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Listen to these words. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. The text is saying something very important here. 
It's telling us that when we put our trust in the Lord with all our heart, that God will transition us or direct us through the different seasons of life successfully. Not in defeat, but in success. And, and I began to study this text here. I began to open up the word and began to look at it and meditate on it and think about it and seek God about it. And this is what I came, I came out of with this thing, with this text in Proverbs chapter 3. Listen close to this, please. Uh, in verse 5, it says, trust in the Lord. Remember that I'm talking about navigating through this season successfully. And I'm saying to you today that if we are going to get through this successfully, we've got to continue to trust God no matter what the circumstances look like. And the writer says this, trust in the Lord. This is verse 5 of Proverbs chapter 3. And I looked up the word trust there, and the word means to put your confidence in. Somehow, we have misconstrued this word trust to mean something else. But the true reality of this text is when the writer says trust in the Lord, he is really saying this, put your confidence in God. Do not put your confidence in the government. Do not put your, conf your confidence in our governors. Do not put your confidence on the Channel 7 News and all the bad news that you hear. But put your confidence in God. Do not put your confidence in fear, in your doubts, in your lack. But put your confidence in God. That's what the writer is saying. And then he tells us how to do that. He says, put your confidence in the Lord and trust Him with all of your heart. And then I was prompted again to look at what the meaning of that word heart meant in the original writings. And the word heart just simply mean your mind. Trust the Lord with all your mind. You see, friends, your mind is the battlefield of the enemy. It's where all the negative thoughts come. See, when your mind is convinced, your actions will follow. And what the Lord is saying is this, trust me with all your mind. Trust me with all your thoughts. That's what he's saying. And then he adds this in verse 5, and lean not on your own understanding. I looked up the word lean, and the word lean means to rely upon. What the Lord is saying, don't rely on your own wisdom, don't rely on your own intellect, don't rely on your own, on your own, on your own thoughts, he said. He says, but don't lean on them. And he says, do not lean on your own understanding. And then I looked up the word understanding, and the word simply means wisdom. The Lord is saying, don't lean, don't rely on your own wisdom. Your own wisdom will tell you to do something. Hallelujah. But trust in God will tell you to do something completely different from what your own wisdom might tell you. This is what he's telling us here. And then he says in verse 6, grab this. He says, in all your ways acknowledge him. And then I had to look up the word acknowledge. I couldn't finish that phrase without looking that up. And when I looked up the word acknowledge, to my amazement, the word acknowledge means to know, as you would know someone. And, 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 and he's saying, in all your ways, know him. And I began to think, what do you mean by that, God? What do you mean by in all your ways, know you, know him? And I began to look at that, meditate, study on it. And it simply means this, that when we begin, that we, we ought to begin, continue, and end every decision in our lives with God in mind. Let me say that again. To, to, to acknowledge Him simply means that we begin, we continue, and we end every decision in our lives with God in mind. We don't, we don't begin and end and, and continue every decision with fear, doubt, concerns. No, friends, every decision we make in life ought to be with God in mind. That's what the writer is really saying. See, and if we are going to get through this season, we have to do that effectively and then I had to read a little further in verse 6 and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll change, I'll, change I'll, I'll move the sails here in just a second he says in verse 6 and when you do that listen when you do that you, you have to understand this he says when you when you put your confidence in God when, when you when you trust God with all your mind your all your decisions when you lean and rely not in your own wisdom and your own understanding he says when you do all that when you acknowledge God when you begin continue and end every decision of your 
your life with God in mind, not what the, not, not what the talking heads are saying over the television set, not what the government is saying, not what your feelings are saying, not what your fears are saying. He says, when you do this, he gives us a promise. In verse 6, he says, and he will direct your paths. And of course, if you know me for any length of time, I've got to know what that word direct means. He says, he will direct your path. And I looked it up. And the word direct means to make right, pleasant, and prosperous. In essence, what the Lord is saying is this. I've grabbed all of these words. I've compounded them together into one phrase. And this is what I believe the Lord is trying to tell us in this verse. Put your whole confidence in the Lord. Do not rely on your own wisdom and your own intellect, but begin, continue, and end every decision that you make with God in mind, and God himself will make your ways pleasant and prosperous. Friends, that's the word of the Lord for us today. Trust God, trust God, trust God, trust God, trust God, trust God. Friends, we've had to trust God for the last two months, uh, and this is the time we continue to trust God, because I believe this, friends, that this is a promise from God, and this is a promise to you and I. And if we are going to navigate through this season of our lives successfully and not be like the spider that is dying in, his, in, in, in that puddle of water after falling down, we're going, to have, we're, we're going to need to continue to trust God. Trust God. Secondly, that's principle number one. Secondly, how else, what else can we do to successfully navigate through this season of life? We must continue in faith, 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 faith. What is faith? We talk a lot about faith, and the truth is, many talk about faith, but never really take the time to, to articulate or to think faith through. And faith is nothing more, I, I don't want to use the word nothing more, because faith it, it encapsulates such a huge, it's a, such a huge uh, topic that is difficult at times to really navigate through it. But we, we can touch the surface this, this evening. Faith is simply this, this. This is faith. Faith is confidence in what we say we believe. I'm going to say that again. Faith is confidence in what we say we believe. We, we, we say that God heals, but my, I ask you today, do, do you have the faith to believe and do you have the confidence to believe that God truly does heal? We, we say that God has good plans for us, plans not to hurt us, but to prosper us and give us hope in the future. But the truth is, those are just words uh, if we don't apply faith to that. If we don't put confidence in that word, then they're just words, friends, uh, and words are not going to get us very far. Faith is confidence in what we say we believe. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, the writer tells us what faith is. He says, faith is, listen to this, confidence in what we hope for, the assurance of what we do not see. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. Martin Luther King, I think, said it best. Martin Luther King Jr., excuse me, the, the great uh, activist uh, and, and preacher, amen. He, he said this concerning faith. He described it this way. He said, faith is taking the first step. Listen to these words. Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase, end quote. Oh, praise God. Martin Luther is saying this. He said, faith is taking a blind step. It's taking a step even when you cannot see the staircase, Friends, this is the hour for you and I to walk in faith. This is the hour for you and I not to be talking about faith, but this is the hour for you to rise up, amen, and begin to operate in the faith that God has given us, amen, because I believe that this is the hour for the church to walk in faith and show the world that we don't live by fear, we don't live by doubt, we don't live by concerns, amen, that we live by faith in the Lord and the Lord is with us, amen. Faith, friends, and I'm going to make this a little clear. Faith is not some theological acknowledgement of our belief system. Let me say that again. Faith is not some mental theological acknowledgement of our belief system, but rather it is an action into the unknown without any guarantees. I'm going to repeat that again because God gave me this this morning when I was preparing for this message, and this is exactly what he gave me. He said this to me. He says, faith... 
It's not some mental theological acknowledgement of our belief system, but rather it is an action into the unknown without any guarantees. And right now, friends, uh, I'm hearing that they're opening up churches right now. I'm hearing that they're opening up restaurants right now. And friends, th this may be a time for you and I to start walking by faith and not fear. Amen. Uh, you know me. I'm a very cautious person. And I, and I, try, to t I try to do things, amen, the right way and, and step very slowly. But I really believe this is the hour. This is the hour to walk by faith. This is the hour to believe God by faith. Amen. Uh, faith be why? Because faith is not some theological acknowledgement of our belief system, but rather it is an action unto the unknown without any guarantee. See, friend, when you exercise faith, you're going into the unknown. And you can't go into the unknown with a guarantee that something will happen the way you expected it to happen because the unknown is, is unknown. But faith says, I don't know, but I'm going to step into it anyways, even though I don't know because that's what faith is. In fact, I think that there's plenty of scriptural evidence concerning what I am saying. Uh, in Hebrews 11, 8, look what the writer says. But by, listen to this close. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive, watch this, as, in his, as, in his, as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. Oh, hallelujah. God calls Abraham and he tells him, leave your family, leave your friends, leave your business, leave your possessions, leave everything and go and I will show you as you go where you are to go. And friends, Abraham went, according to the text, he obeyed God. He didn't know where he was going. It was unknown to him, but he took the first step, the second step. And as he began to walk, God began to direct the steps uh, and he was able to come into a place of destiny and faith simply because he was a man that walked by faith, friends. He wasn't a man who just had a mental theological acknowledgement and belief system, but he was a man of action who went and stepped into the unknown. That's what faith is, friends. Faith is with stepping into the unknown. Faith is never demonstrated by the things we say we believe. I'm going to say that again. Faith is never demonstrated by the things we say we believe. People say they believe all kinds of things. But the truth is, those are just words. Faith can never be demonstrated by a simple intellectual acknowledgement of what we say we believe. Faith is demonstrated, true faith is demonstrated by action. In fact, the brother of our Lord, James, writes this in James chapter 2, verse 18. Listen close to these words. He says, but someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. And then James says this, show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith with my deeds. What James is saying is this, it is impossible to prove your faith without, without works, without action. He says, but I can, pr I can prove to you my faith by my actions. It's really what James is saying. And I, and I ask you here today, friend, I'm asking you here tonight this. I, I, can, can you, what kind of faith do you have? Do you have the kind of faith that is nothing more than a theological acknowledgement of a belief system? Or do you have a faith that actually steps into the unknown, steps into action, that ignores the circumstances, ignores the talking heads, ignores the fear, ignores all of that, and steps in and says, God, I got faith in you and I'm going to step in. That's faith, friend. Is that the kind of faith that you have? Amen. See, faith is always an action. It's never a systematic theological acknowledgement of a belief system. You, we, we read this throughout Scripture. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, it, says, it says this, By faith, Abel offered God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he offered. By faith, he offered. And we always ask, why did God re reject Cain's offering and received Abel's offering? Well, the, the text is clear. It says, because Abel offered his offering by faith. He didn't know anything. He, he, he stepped into the unknown. He believed God and trusted God and, and gave to God while his brother had no faith in what he did. Because faith is an action. In Hebrews eleven seven, 7, it says, By faith Noah, when warned about the things yet not seen, in holy fear he built an ark. The writer is saying this, that Noah, 
In a time that they had never seen rain. He was living in a place that they had never ever seen rain. God spoke to him and says, I want you to build me an ark because it's going to rain and, and I'm going to flood the entire earth because the, for whatever reason, we don't, want, we, don't need to, we don't have time to get into that. But the Bible says that even though they never saw rain for 120 years, Noah moved by faith and he began to build the ark against all the ridicule. They laughed at him. They mocked him. They say, you're crazy. You're a fanatic. You, you, you're just a holy roller Pentecostal. You, you, you don't know what. You just went crazy, old man. But, but Noah had faith, man. He believed that God has spoken to him and he began to build and build the ark because the Bible says is he moved and he, he had not seen what was yet to happen, but he moved by faith and he built the ark that's faith friend he didn't just sit around talking about uh, how to have the right dimensions and building an ark he didn't sit around and and, and and go to Google and figure out how well you know how many two by fours am I gonna need no friends he just went out there and started doing it and friends that's what faith does faith just goes out there and starts doing it see what we say we believe is not what we believe what we believe is always demonstrated by the actualities of our lives that's faith friend Faith believes in spite of circumstances and acts in spite of consequences. Let me say that again. Faith believes in spite of circumstances and acts in spite of consequences. That's faith. Faith is belief without evidence or reason. Oh, glory to God. Faith is belief without evidence or reason. Don't try to reason faith. Just move. Just act upon it. Amen. And Bob Proctor, Bob Proctor said this. He said, quote, faith and fear both demand that you believe in something you cannot see. You make the choice. End quote. Bob Proctor said, I'm going to repeat that again. He says, faith and fear both demand that you believe in something you cannot see. He says, but you make the choice. Friends, if we're going to get through this season... We have to learn to trust God through this season, and we got to walk in faith. we got to walk in faith, not just talk about it, not just become a, a, theological, uh, a theological brainiac. All you do is just talk about it and never put action into words. Amen. But we got to be like, we got we to be like Abel, offer God an offering by faith. We got to be like Noah, build the ark by faith. We got to move by faith and stop talking about faith. Amen. I, I, I really believe that. That, that God desires for us to exercise faith in this season. Now, lastly, and in closing, if we are going to navigate through this season of pandemic and, and, and come out the other side successfully, we're going to transition through this whole time together. The last thing that I believe that God gave me was this. We need to hope, hope, trust, faith, and hope. And I ask myself, what is hope? Hope is this. Listen close. Because hope is not sitting around at home saying, I hope I get married, you know. You sit around and think about doing that. You just sit around and waiting that God is going to drop a, a, you know, a spouse right through the roof of your house. Bam, break down through the tile, break down through, through the ceiling. And, and she lands and he says, here I am, you know. It, it ain't going to happen that way. That, that's not hope, friends. I'm, I'm talking about hope, hope, hope. Hope is this. Listen close. Hope is a trustful expectation particularly with reference to the fulfillment of God's promises. I'm going to say that again. Hope is a trustful expectation, particularly with reference to the fulfillment of God's promises. Hope is an anticipation and a confidence and an expectation that what God has promised will come through. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Hope is anticipating and having a confidence and an expectation that what God has promised will come to pass, friend. That is hope. And if we're going to get through this, we got to have trust, we got to have faith, and we got to continue hoping in the promises of God, expecting the fulfillment of the promises of God with confidence and assurance and anticipation that God will come through for us friends that's hope hope is holding on to what we profess 
Because we know that God is faithful. Let me say it again. Hope is holding on to what we profess we believe simply because we truly believe that God is faithful. I'm going to read you a text from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Listen to these words. It says this, let us hold unswervingly. The Greek word there means without wavering. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. Oh, glory. He's saying, I know that you're professing hope all the time from your lips. He says, but listen, it's not enough to profess. He says, let us hold to that hope unswervingly without wavering for he that promised it is faithful. And that's what hope is. Hope is the ability not only to anticipate, but to expect that God, that what God has promised, he is going to keep. Amen. Because God is faithful. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 31, Paul wrote these words. He says, he says, if God is for us, then who can be against us? Hallelujah. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, Paul said this, he says, I am confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion unto the day of Jesus Christ. Paul is saying, I am confident in this hope that God who began the work in you, he is going to take care of you. He is going to complete complete this. He is going to transition you from this area this time to the next era of our lives. He says successfully because we put our hope in him. Glory to God. You see friends in closing our, our strength our ability and our confidence does not come from ourselves. It doesn't come from our intellectual understanding. It doesn't come from our own wisdom, but our strength and our ability to navigate through this season comes simply because, excuse me, we put our hope in God. We put our hope in God. We put our trust, expectation, and anticipation on the promises of God because He who promised it is faithful. Hallelujah. Look what Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord, listen close, will renew their strength. They will soar like wings of eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. What was, what was Isaiah saying? That those who put their hope in God, those who put their faith in God, those who put their trust in God, he says, they will be endowed with great strength and they will soar like the eagles and they will run and not grow weary and they will walk <coughs> and not faint. Friends, in that vision that I saw, I saw these two spiders grappling, fighting for their lives, fighting for their destinies, for their fate. And I saw their destinies die in my vision. I saw them die. I saw them die as they were, as they were just trying to survive in, 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 that, in that circumstance in which they have fallen from. And friends, I, I want to tell you something today that I, I am concerned for you, friend. I don't know who you are. I don't know who's watching me. I don't know whose heart God is touching, and that's not for me to know. But I want you to know something that, that I, I, you, if you're going to make it through this time together, you, you need to continue to trust God. You need to put your faith in God and you need to continue to put your hope in the promises of God because he who promises faithful friends because we're, we're about to get out from this quarantine. But I, I don't believe that this is the end of, of the situation. I believe we're going to face many more hardships along along the lines in, in the years and the times to come. But if we're going to survive it, friends, if we're going to survive every season, if we're going to navigate and transit from one season of life to the other and then the other and the other successfully without falling, without without collapsing, Without, without forfeiting our destiny, our fate, amen. The only way we're going to do that is by continuing in faith in God, by continuing hoping in God, by continuing walking and trusting in the Lord, amen. It's the only way we're going to make it because it is not by our strength, but it is by His strength. And I leave you with this thought. Man will disappoint you. I have no doubt about that. Live long enough. And you will have many disappointments from men. 
But I want you to know that God will never disappoint you. Man will break its promises, but God will never break his promises. Martin Luther King Jr. said this. Listen close. Quote, we must accept the finite disappointments, but never lose the infinite hope. End quote. We must accept the finite disappointment, but never lose the infinite hope. And Maya Angelo, the great American poet and singer, said this, quote, Hope and fear cannot occupy the same space. Invite one to stay and tell the other one to go. Oh, glory to God. She said this. I'm going to say that again. He says, Hope and fear cannot occupy the same space. She said, invite one to stay and tell the other one to go. Friends, those are words of wisdom. And Christopher Reeve, you may have known, said this, quote, Once you choose hope, anything is possible. Once you choose hope, anything is possible. If you are here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to invite you today, tonight, to open your heart to the Lord. 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave his life for you, friend. That's right. He died for you on an old rugged cross as a common criminal. Even though he never committed any sin, he died as a sinner because he died for your sins and my sins. And today he invites you to come and receive him and receive the gift of salvation that he has purchased with his blood for you. Friends, he loves you. There is nothing you can ever do that will cause God to hate you. He loved you when you were born, and He loves you and will continue to love you the day you die. But friends, today you have a choice to make. You have the choice to make. I spoke about faith. I ask you today that if you would put your faith in Jesus Christ, He would save your soul. He would give you a new start, a new beginning. If you're here today and you don't know Him, I would ask you to repeat this prayer with me if you desire to receive Him in your heart. Say, Father, I am a sinner. I deserve hell and the grave. But I believe that Jesus died for my sins and resurrected on the third day. Say that, please. I receive Him in my heart and confess Him with my mouth. And Lord, today I surrender my life to You. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you said that today, right here underneath me, there is a digital connect card link. You can use that card link and just send us, uh, just go there and just click on it. And it will take you to a connect group, a digital card you can just fill out. We want to connect with you. We want you to connect with us. And let us know that you gave your life to Jesus so that we can pray for you. Let us know what your struggles are. Let us know if you have any prayer requests and we will pray for you. For the rest of you who have tuned in today with me, I encourage you to live your life not in fear of circumstances and consequences, but live your life by trusting God in faith and in hope. Thank you for joining in. We love you. And certainly, even if we didn't, God loves you. And that, friend, is more important than anything else. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you Sunday. Bye-bye.